It's a hard day today. Um, I've been going through this, you know, as I, you know, for a while, and I'm just tired of the isolation. I'm tired of being um, robbed of emotional support, friends, family, love in my in this torture campaign. I don't. I, my life isn't normally like this. So I'm forced into this level of insanity for me that, you know, nothing. Um, I put into the YouTube channel my information because I was trying to look up a social worker, Janissa. And I just want you to see what I have to go through. Okay. That's not my pay site. So I have to go through the cyberbullying. This is what I have to go through looking for my things. Just flat out, just, you know, sabotaging my life. right here they're just a Keanu Clark piece to just make it difficult when I'm looking for my own things the, it just all altered all of this used to be the it me and other bullying cyber bullying sites this is criminal you know but people aren't don't appear to be racking up charges for these crimes so they, to make it difficult for me to do searches, they just put in a flat out, put in my name, Keanu Clark Peace. So therefore, when I'm doing my searches, I have to go through the cyberbullying. My phone says that this is a police department I've never called. Let me check and see if this is a police department. I don't think I've had dealings with this police department if it's really one. Southeast Substation? Yes, ma'am. What's going on? Okay. Um, is it okay if I have your name so I know who I'm talking to? Sergeant Parker. Okay. And your badge number? 10220. Okay. I just wanted to know my rights. I'm going through a domestic violence like stalking situation. And I just want to know uh, my rights and what all I can do to protect myself in this crisis. I'm going through a lot of emotional and psychological distress. Is really trying to be stalked and hunted, feel hunted. It's really a painful experience. I mean, you can make police reports and you have it takes place. Um, I mean, we make the police report. It goes to a detective. It gets investigated and then go from there. But, I mean, you can get a protective order against him, but we don't do protective orders. That's going to be going to... Uh, downtown to get that done did you um, stop because it used to be a form that you did protective orders you assisted with protection orders and locations if we really arrest actually if we arrest them and it's a felony family violence yes we do what's called an emergency protective order but we don't keep those up we file that for the initial but it's on the victim to continue it okay so, so right now if we're not arresting him we're not doing an epo for you Okay, so there's a lot of psychological and emotional abuse, as I was saying, uh, for being stopped. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah. what what are you what are the tools that I can use to protect myself? I don't have any tools to give you for that. Maybe. For law enforcement, what are what it, as law enforcement, there's no manner of getting protected with law enforcement because uh, stalking no, is I criminal. You, just like I told you, you can make a report, but I cannot tell you how to protect yourself. Okay, well, law enforcement with designed to protect and serve cannot tell me how to protect myself against the crime. I am serving you, ma'am, and telling you to call 911 if you feel the need to. I, I'm, I don't understand. What's your name again? Sergeant Parker, oh, 1022. Okay, so a crime is being committed and you can't help me with getting protected from that crime. You can call 911, ma'am. Okay, you don't, do, did you ask me if I already have a report? Did you ask me, you know, I'm asking you for your responsibility. I don't understand well, for five years and I'm just in tears and my family member crying why I had to endure all this psychological damage. Ma'am, are you there? I just, I was just crying in front of my family and got mistreated then too. It, it just ignored. You don't want to talk? I 
I don't understand why the police department, uh-huh. uh, family members, churches, uh-huh. um, domestic violence organizations, um, the uh, Frank Crowley, uh, for where they do protection orders, why no one attorneys wants me to have this education on how to protect myself. They don't want me to know. So let me call the next con artist. Just getting ignored. Like my family did. Daughter, Sergeant Andrews, how can I help you? Yes, ma'am. May I have your badge number, please? How can I help you? You don't want me to have your badge number? I'm in a, um, like I'm, a domestic... I'm sorry? How can I help you? Okay, if you don't want me to have your badge number. Okay, I'm in a domestic violence like stalking situation. And I just really don't know how to protect myself. It's very emotionally draining. And there's a lot of, like a, a lot of psychological damage that's been done. So, stalking is a crime. So, what do I need to do? Hang up and call 911. Okay. Um, what, how does that... You don't want me to have any education on how to protect myself? myself? Call 911. What is 911 going to do? I've already tried that and didn't really get a lot of assistance. I wanted to get education from the police department, ma'am. This is abusive, ma'am, for five years. I wanted to get I, for a call to call, location to location to get violated and mistreated. It's sadistic and sick. You know, I may you let the laughter go. And I just don't find it really fruitful to keep crying, you know, and, and just to get nowhere. But believe me, the pain and suffering, you know, I just can't fathom anyone just lo- looking at this channel. It, it's just frightening to me because the kind of person that I am, how can you sit, look, watch, and don't assist? How? So I've had a lot of slander, you know, like um, in an environment that I was in, there was a little boy living in a tent. His mother gave him tough love. I just didn't understand how that community could let this child live in a tent, like an t- early teenager. Well, not early, but uh, like a teenager. So I took him to a shelter and gave him a little money. Drove, find a shelter for him to go to. This is before I had ever been in one. So I took him to, this is the things that I do. I just don't understand having to be forced around the heartless people. I, if I had choices, I don't want to be surrounded in repetitive environments just like this. Open stocking until I pulled up the tab, put up the tab, pulled up the tablet. So I imagine, I imagine I just from the, the way that this feels that this maybe this party's in the cartel. I don't know. But the, there's deliberate schemes to, you know, for psychological damage and to represent itself like nothing has ever happened. But it's actually torture. When you, uh, there's a lot of things we have only scratched the surface because a lot of things that I have experienced is not realistic. I there's people that do things to let me know that they're controlled, that I can't communicate because they would make me sound mentally ill. So I just have to sit and marinate and knowing that a multitude of people are a part of these cons, including family members, and there's nothing I can do. So I, my family member did state, you know, which I'm already aware, being blacklisted from housing and all these multiple conspirators in my abuse. What is the, you know, tent? Being forced into a tent or this, you know, which I'm not, I'm very grateful about the, um, what I'm getting from the family member, but I don't want it to be controlled. I don't want my family member in T it's this five years now. It used to be tears and meltdowns in these schemes. But five years of it, everyone gets immune to what we're forced to be a part of or be involved in. So, yes, I, as I stated, today was a hard day. Like many others, they can follow, um, go to their family, go to the police department, go to hospitals, go to CPS. I All those avenues are shut down for me. Even trying to go a casual, you know, just going to the store, window shop, trying to walk. Just trying to walk, listen to headphones, walking in the community, robbed of that. This is a video diary.